Okay. It's time to start more Hampshire action. So, start staying here, issue 24, September 1987. Still one pound 25. See how long that lasts. <laughs> eh, still not an official Amsterdam publication. Our second birthday, we celebrate the success of Alan Sugar's CPCs. With cake, apparently. Cake made of floppy disks. The mold breaking magazine from future publishing. Words work again. M more word processing. Imagine Arkanoid, the blockbuster, screen off the screen of one of the most addictive arcade games ever. It's true to the original with sharp graphics and play features such as lasers, catch and hold, elongator, and much, much more. This is Arkanoid, the real thing. Magmax, hot from the arcades, get sharp or you're dead. Build up this mean machine to its awesome firepower to stand any chance of completing your task. Stunning graphics and lightning gameplay. Test your reflexes and sharp shooting to the limits. Take on Magmax. It's a killer. Right. Imagine. Imagine. Uh, <laughs> slap Fight from Taito Corporation comes Slap Fight and the last word in Planet Combat. Multi screen realistic graphics and all the coin up features. Addictive and compelling, you just can't put your joystick down. Army moves. You are one of the elite, a hand picked crack trooper in battle against a formidable enemy. You need all, all your skill to take advantage of every situation, stamina, and to keep on going where others would fail, and courage to face the ceaseless bombardment by enemy troops, helicopters, and artillery. And if you survive army moves, you'll have some great tales to tell. Yep. <laughs> Here's what we're expecting in this issue. Cake. The master game of this issue is Ixalon. I'm sure we'll get to it eventually. <laughs> Summer celebration. It's hard to believe this is issue 24. Amstrad Action has now been in existence for two years. Life in the computer industry has always progressed at accelerating pace. But it seems like only yesterday that we were sprang up out of nothing in sleepy little Summerton. Future publishing has grown so quickly that after just two years we published three successful Amstrad magazines. And of course we aren't stopping there. In the autumn we launched Advanced Computer Entertainment, a multi-machine machi multi -machine magazine that revolutionised the world of computer mags. We'd be nowhere without those amazing machines, the CPCs and their mastermind, Alan Sugar. As 664 owners will testify, he's not exactly renowned for his caring attitude to users, but he's certainly made life interesting over the past two years, and we never know how he'll surprise us next. Things are changing here on at here on AA as well. Jim Nagel, a hard-working production editor, is giving up commuting and leaving to work in his, on his local paper in Glastonbury. We wish him all the best and confidently predict that the old Gaz will soon have a thriving comms network. There will be a new writer on AA next month. A lucky soul plucked from thousands of eager applicants. Watch the space. We might even print a picture of him. On the outside, we say farewell to Trevor. But he's not going far. He's just removing his AA hat and putting, putting on that of art editor on Ace. Ollie Alderton will fill the shoes of the great Gillum. How will Toot react to this change of personnel? So lie back in the sun, with the waves gently lapping at the shore, and try not to get his, this copy of AA covered in sand, salt water, or seagull droppings. Yeah. Hey. 
James Bond in the Living Daylights, the computer game. And there he is. Just to start the movie. Fable 4, Amstrad, CPC, and PCW. Commodore 64 and Amiga. Spectrum 48, 128, plus, plus 2 and 3. BBC and B and Master. Atari 8-bit and MSX. Reaction, you get the last word on the previous issue. And the first words on this one. Keep those cars and letters coming in. You're welcome to use electronic mail. This is how they use electronic mail in the 80s. We cannot possibly reply individually, so please don't be offended. We are, well, we are busy writing, and this is the next issue of your favourite magazine. If you have problems with subscriptions or mail order, please write direct to those departments, which remain at the old barn in Somerton. By any other name, Amstrad Action. What a fab name for an Amstrad mag. Curiosity is killing me. Please tell me who thought of this brill name. Richard Lombard, Chingford, London. Hard to remember two years later, but it was what of Chris Anderson, Bob Wade, or Trevor Gillum. Because that was the whole of future publishing at the time. We are now nearing 40. Chris seems to think it was one of his Eureka in the Bath inspirations. Rejects you'll be glad to know included. M Sandwich, Slamstrad, and Whamstrad. Bob was also quick not to adopt the title Fabulous Amstrad Software Tester. Oh. This will confuse him in the future. Yeah. They know, they know machine code in, in the in the caveman days. City Mystery. For the past few months, I've been looking up Amstrad's share price. In June, it dropped from 208p to 162p. As this is quite a substantial fall, I would like to know if you have any ideas of why it happened. Stephen Parkinson, London. In light of Mr. Alan Sugar's recent castigations of the city, which you may have read in the press, perhaps the city was repaying the compliment. The main reason for the June drop was probably the conflicting reports on how well the Amstrad PC 1512 was doing when the 1640 was launched in the US before here. But the workings of the city are one of life's great mysteries. We certainly don't understand them. Read Mike Sealm's Doodlebugs column in issue 12 of a sister magazine, PC Plus, for wiser waffle on the subject. Hyperbole, axes grind. Psst, wanna make some money? Bonzo Super Meddler is guaranteed to transfer more games than any other program. The first person to find more successful program will receive thrice their money back. Nemesis Ad, AA23, page 23. Sirens Discovery Plus, same issue, page 35, is guaranteed to transfer more games than any other program. The first person who can find a more successful program will receive twice his money back. Now I'm going to buy, buy Discovery Plus and say that Super Meddler is more successful. When I have got my money off them, I will buy Super Meddler and say that Discovery Plus is more successful. It should leave me with about £38 profit. People complain about the hype on games, but what about adverts like these two? All in all, I think it's rather stupid. Paul Page, Solihull, West Midlands. Nemesis ad is quoting Sirens, of course, offering to outdo. Nemesis seems to prefer solecism to Sirens seeming sexism. Oh, right art. A oh, white art. Here's a printout of one of the pictures I drew of Melbourne Draw. Justin Mason, Shanklin, Isle of Wight. Here's a Garfield and Odie. The Odie's not slobbering enough. It's that would it would help it some more. 
He's hooked on those Mandelbrot sets. He's waiting for it to finish. He's got spider webs all over him. They take ages. Goodness, anyone. I would like to tell Snoopy and Woodstock Reaction 23 that I hold the record for the most originals. 279. No lie. Jonathan Lee, Slade Green Kent. I rush to my room to count my games collection. I have 240 tapes and 38 discs, all are originals. G. Jones, Whitstable, Kent. Okay, now we know. Show off. Nice to see you all at the Amstrad show this month, but on the whole, what a disappointment for the CPC owner. Apart from cheap discs and the two software stands, just about everything was angled at the PC or PCW. Even products that could be could have applied, like modems and digitizers, were displayed only for the business machines. That's the last database show I'm bothering with. We're all on the first Android action show. Jim Palmer, Christchurch, Dorset. Richard Montero, however, found a surprising amount of software for the CBC machines, albeit mostly serious stuff rather than games. See his report in this month's M scene. The Space Age Look. Tutor's on the moon, I guess. With a flag in his head. This looks like the American flag. Yeah. Okay. Short decade. Does anyone know where I can get a copy of Street Machine? This was reviewed in several mags about the about a decade ago. It seems to be completely unobtainable, unobtainable. I really fancy a copy. It reminds me of a game I got absolutely addicted to a few years ago called Rally Cross. This, of course, was an arcade game. I mean, Rally X, I should be thinking of. Which brings me to my second point. Is it possible to obtain many of these classic arcade games for the Amstrad? I'm particularly interested in Space Invaders, Galaxians, Firebirds. Firebirds? Space Firebirds, maybe? Moon Dust, I think? Astro Fighter, and the above mentioned Ready Cross. And one which you, which was called something like Defender, where wiggly lines come from the screen towards your bases, which you shoot by moving a large ball around. I think that's um, Missile Command. Not Defender. Re-reviewed Street Machine and AA-17. Not exactly a decade ago. You can still get it direct from the programmer, Software Invasion, at 54 Sycamore Road, London. Amstrad versions of most of your games came out, but you're more likely these days to find them second-hand than in the shops. The last one sounds like Missile Command, which hasn't been converted as far as we know. Anti anti email. It's a shame there's antipathy toward the electronic mail. It can be very useful if utilized fully. I find Telecom Gold rather unfriendly to the user, and with the muted price increase, it looks worse. Prestel, though, a touch unreliable, and without quite as many trimmings as gold, is a lot easier to use. Although I could well be prejudiced towards it since I used it a lot. A few plats. One of my moans is the difficulty of finding out people's electronic email box numbers. Why don't they print it on their note paper? This system is useful only in so far as you can contact other people. You can afford to use Gold's online directory, even at old charges. Since Gold is owned by British Telecom, why can't email numbers be printed alongside ordinary addresses and phone books? Thinking, thinking too far in the future there. Master Duff. I recently bought Jekyll and Wide from, from a computer shop and found it was riddled with errors and would not load. My CPC 464 is not at fault. The shop is not in my hometown. By bus, I would have to get up early in the morning and spend six hours there just for one tape. Does Master Tronic replace faulty games? Could I use Mirage Imager Mark III to make backup copies of my games? Andrew Semi Huff, Tane, Rothshire. 
I should think Master Trunk would oblige. The address again is 8 Paul Street, London. Yes. Back, aliens. Aid in the battle against disc-based aliens. I've experienced the problem that P. Winter describes, Reaction 23. The answer is to send the disc back to Electric Dreams for a replacement. You know, Black Petworth, West Sussex. Okay. Well, that's the most realistic artist prog yet. Ooh, just, well, it's not a real gun, then. A poke for daddy. Please, not, please do not send our daddy any more games. He sits up all night and won't read us a bedtime story when he is trying to poke his latest game. Also, when he is at the computer, he won't let us play with our fun school games. We are two computer age, computer orphans aged two and a half and five months. Mummy misses daddy too. Emma and Catherine Hodges Barnett Hurts. Very good handwriting for a two-year-old. <laughs> okay. A.A. Uber Alleys. I've been a loyal reader of your mag since issue 2. Two years ago I founded the German computer service in Stuttgart. We are now offering help to the British readers of the best Amstrad mag we know. If there's anyone in the UK with any problems or tips, contact us. We're really sorry about the surrendering of Amtix, which was Brill too. We think the best CPC game available now is Bob Winner and are very disappointed about the porn. It's graphics, we expected more. Kai Ue Hürthnik, Ostrich, Stuttgart, West Germany. Oh, they got Bob Winner in Germany. Not, I don't know, don't know if they got a UK release or not. Swallowed by the Sea. AA20's back page was an advertisement for Army Moves by Ocean. I'm not buying that, I thought, after bu buying many Ocean games that should have been dumped in the sea. Then pages 2 and 3 was another of these spreads advertising four games from Imagine. Mag Max, Eklund, Army Moves, hang on, that's an Ocean game. Matt C of Aintree tells me Ocean is owned by Imagine, is this true? I think that's the other way around. Imagine is owned by Ocean. Andy Hyam, William, Liverpool. It's true as saying the Atlantic is part of the Avon. Clear then. Very clear. No mods in Oz. I recently decided to get a modulator and power source for my 6128. The green screen is great for typing out letters but detracts from games. At Billy Guyatz, which is about the only place to get software or hardware, I was very disappointed that they are not made in Australia anymore, and that you need a different one for the 6128 as compared to the 464. Could you please tell me where I could order one from England? I would also like to ask the big software companies how they think we teenagers get around 50 Australian dollars for a good game like Akari Warriors. The prices are ridiculous! Stephen Path, Thunder Down Under, near North Victoria. The 6128 power supply would suit the 464 as well. It would just have a spare strove socket. The only one on the market here from, is from Amstrad in Brentwood, Essex. Since the Curry Warriors on disc cost £15 here and the exchange rate is 2.27, an Oz price of $34 would be more like it. $15 for postage? You could do better by mail order. AA gets mountains more letters than we have room to print. So now that we're a classif there's a classified ads section, if you want to advertise a user club you're setting up, you'll have to go there. But Toots on vacation, apparently. The Hawaiian look. Helpline. Okay. People want help. It's toot again. Won't you please, please help me? Okay. <laughs> A 
Still selling the best three three inch second disc drive for the CPCs at seventy nine pound ninety five, including VAT and PMP. So I should mention games here cost forty five dollars full price on cassette, sixty dollars on disc if I remember. So it's a little bit more expensive here too. <laughs> Amazon, two years on and going strong. This month is the second anniversary of Amstrad Action's creation. It's also three years since the CPC 464 appeared on the computer scene. To celebrate these twin events, we're going to take a look back at the happy association of mag and machine and offering you the chance to win some unique AA memorabilia. In case any of you had, had forgotten what an exciting two years it's been, or only recently bought a CPC, then here's a look back at the events. October 1985. Amtrak Action arrived in news agents all over the country. The main news story was the arrival of the CPC 6128 and PCW 8256 computers and the death of the CPC 664 after just five months production. This trio of announcements had far-reaching repercussions, most seriously for 664 owners who felt betrayed by Amstrad and made their feelings known in our letters page. November 1985 a full review of the PCW8256 was a sign of great things to come. BizProgs made its second and final appearance before being replaced by the much more sensibly named Serious Software. December 985. Things were really starting to happen by issue 3. The first Amstrad computer show, the first Typins, and an exclusive preview of Elite. By now AA had really found its feet and so had Amstrad announcing profits of over £20 million. Christmas 985, a Christmas issue, looked a little different because it had a cassette slapped on the cover containing two games. Eager readers could hardly believe their eyes. It set a trend that many other publishers have followed, and the news was plenty of controversy about whether, whether there was or wasn't a shortage of 3-inch discs. February 986, no surprises, Elite scooped the coveted Master Game Award. The arrival of the now legendary hero, Sugar Man. Rumours are rife of the impending launch of an IBM compatible machine, but as usual, Amstrad wasn't commenting. March 986. The second Amstrad show in three months had us all tired out, but not too tired to play the master game Spin Dizzy, the first original classic on the CPCs. April 986. Amstrad's half yearly profits went through the roof again, over £27 million. Our feature on educational software concluded that there wasn't a lot around, and sadly, that's still the case in 987. May 1986. What? Another cover cassette? This time with a free game and demos on it? The cross-channel software invasion began with the master game Get Dexter. The PCW8512 appeared, and it was promptly nicknamed the Fat Joyce. June 1986, the Batman playing guide to end all playing guides until he'd have our heels, that is, was sweated and slaved over, but was a great, well, what a great result. The big news was Amstrad's purchase of Sinclair for a pathetic £5 million. This prompted questions about the 464's future, but it's still going strong today. Bat Map July 1986, the IBM compatible rumour is stronger than ever. But Amstrad continued to be non-committal. Yet another staggering playing guide in late nights, this time for Spin Dizzy. August 1986, Nighttime was the first budget master game and showed the shape of the software market to come on the CPCs. September 1986, our first anniversary and the last appearance of an administrative nightmare, High Score. It's also a goodbye to the PCW reviews as our sister magazines 8000 Plus and PC Plus were launched. April, April October 1986. A new image as we can concentrate on photographic covers and did a special on music. November 1986. The art studio made us all look, look at our CPCs in a new way. So did the Spectrum Plus 2. The CPC market was under threat for a second time. December 1986. One of our best covers to date, RPM found himself on the staff and digitised. Hot Tips made its first showing and has never cooled off. Christmas 986, another cover cassette, 
This time with utilities and type-ins from readers as well. In games demos, Gauntlet was master game and settled down for a long, long stay in the charts. February 987, the page maker cover and review were only the start of a still running saga. March 987, new features piled in, helpline, hackers only, review, and a revamp for, for good old action test. April 97, farewell to one of our competitors, Amtix, that Mag finally gave up an unequal struggle. We even told you how to set up in the software, how, software business. May 1987, customising your CBC proved to be one of our sillier features. But the master game was head over heels, which was seriously brilliant. Meanwhile, the CPCs were surviving yet another threat, this time from the Special Plus 3. June 1987, Art Studio was back in an advanced form, and Typins made their first magical appearance on the cover. July 1987, PageMaker was back in the news. We sorted out the confusion. Head Over Heels was also back in one of those mega plane guys. August 1987, words work popped up for the first time, so did classified ads. September 1987, the CPCs and AA are still very much alive and kicking, and looking forward to a third year of non-stop action. We've got a little competition here to answer these questions. 1. Who was the editor of the first issue of AA? What was the first ever Master Game? Be way of exploding fist if I remember. The first cover cassette had two games on it, name one of them. The highest ever Master Game rating was 96%, which game got it? It was spin dizzy. What was the name of the section where readers gave opinions on games? Number six. What does T O O T possibly stand for? I think Toot wrote that one in himself. Got more hardware. Oh, and software, I suppose. Discology is software. Paperboy. Ooh, Paperboy. Mark Haig Hutchinson, author of, of the Highway Encounter series and more recently Revolution, popped in and showed us his latest, the long-awaited Paperboy. The graphics by Paul Walker are superb. Animation and scrolling are just impressive. You'll have to wait until Elite sends us a copy for a full review. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's graphics and everything. Unfortunately, there's no sound at all. Apparently, there's no room for it. Bond blasts out. A competition. Two dodges a bullet. Win the 250 pound compact disc ghetto blaster from the Living Daylights. My name is Bond, James Bond, licensed to kill. And boy, does he have some weird ways of doing it in his latest film, The Living Daylights. Gadgets all over the place, many of which crop up in the game. One particularly nasty device is a seemingly innocent, innocent ghetto blaster. The touch of a button turns into a rocket launcher and blasts the bad guys into lots of unrecognisable bits. Good. Now you can win that ghetto blaster. Funny it actually blew people up. That would be good. Ubisoft, now distributed in the UK by Elite Systems. We've seen this enough. Rebel without a cause. Renegade. A Taito Quinop. Gonna kick your A. Okay. Typins. Program made plain. Describe how this damn thing works. Space the final frontier. Kickstart. And Toot's literally getting kicked. Poor Toot. More typings. Hang in there, all you supers. Sprinters. There's all the free features that have kept the Super Sprint top of the arcades. Available on cassette and disc next month. Trademark Incorporated 987, Atari Games Corporation, or it's reserved, Electric Dreams Software, authorized user. Oh, 
Double Titan Spinning Diamond. Freeze and Toot is frozen. Someone's found the Wingdings font, apparently. So wait, you're in the middle of a game about to blast the Trillionth Penguin, and for some reason you have to leave your computer. There's no pause facility. <laughs> CP Waldridge of Dyford to the rescue. Runners listing before playing a game. To pause the game or any program, press tab. To resume play, press caps lock. Now isn't that handy? Please note this routine won't work on all commercial software. Revolving message. Someone's discovered marquee. Text editor. And more word processing. New word under CPM plus. Printer power. Toot is being chased by a printer. Ah, so says, we probably rush through this a bit quicker, maybe. This. They put action test at the near the end of the magazine for reasons. What is the answer to life, the universe, and everything? Forty two equals multi phase two. <laughs> Yes, 42 pounds is a special summer prize for the multi-phase 2. Why would I need the multi-phase 2? Basically to make backups of programs on a CPC 464, 664 or 6128 and also to enable you to study, alter and customise them. Multi-phase 2 simply makes life worth living again. Problematic. Lofty enigmas with Arnold never, well, hardly ever, leave RPM spinning. Exercising. Max. The 16-bit Macintosh caused something of a stir when Apple computers introduced it earlier this decade. Man communicated with machine via a mouse. The keyboard always became redundant. Operations were performed by moving a pointer controlled by the mouse. This friendly environment of Windows, icons, mouse and pointer was given the acronym WIMP. For almost two years, AMS had been selling AMX art. The first to bring WIMPs to 8-bit micros such as the Amstrad CPCs. Others followed AMX PageMaker, 3 ds icon and now Max. Max is a control panel through which you can access all the functions of the standard Amstrad disk operating system, such as formatting and sector editing. You edit disk sectors just, just like you normally do, without, without having to remember obscure commands. So it's basically like a, like a GUI. Good news! Nicely designed control panel. Windows open and close beautifully. Manual is up to the usual high AMS standard. Vast range of useful disk operations. Joystick keys will do if you're mouseless. Bad news. Icons can't be shifted around. The disk copier seems to have been put in at the last moment. Oh. <laughs> Pet mice. Oh, yeah. I'm sure AMX 3D's icon. Off for a few packages such as PageMaker and Max, there's precious little software that makes use of the ABX mouse. This is a sad tale for the WIMP system. It is one of the more pleasurable means of communicating with a computer. I'm thankful Advanced Memory Systems has kept releasing a slow but steady stream of WIMP software. 3D Zycon is one that seems to have missed many reviewers' eyes. Zycon is a graphics pro package that resembles Arna's model universe. It lets you create vector or wireframe graphics in three planes, X, Y, and Z. Is this why the prefix Z to icon? Make sure you have a pet rodent before heckling AMS, so icon requires one of these creatures harnessed to a Arnold. Oh, okay. Good news! It uses friendly WIMP environment. Manual is well presented and readable. Simple to produce eye-catching designs. Bad news! Mouse required. 
Sudden operations slow the program. Ooh. Robo wants Amphred action. Yeah, uh, we'll get to it eventually. We get. Well, actually, they, they put it to the end for reasons. Spreadsheets. CPM spreadsheets. Okay. Yeah, okay. Oh. Who's, who's this dude? Shaking hands with his computer for reasons we don't know. First calc. Yeah. So this is spreadsheets for babies, pretty much. Good news, metal is easy reading for novice. Command keys are obvious and soon learned. Does the same as other spreadsheets for a fraction of the cost. Bad news, not possible to print results vertically. 5,000 cells may be limiting. Limited formulae options. How much does it cost? 30 pounds? That cheap? Well, I suppose. Hybrid, have you got what it takes? A complex and deeply de developed strategy game brought together to generate the battleground of the future. Hybrid is a combination of superb graphics and original techniques to emulate those fevered imaginations hitherto found only in nightmares. Hybrid challenges your ability to master the superior space adventure. The superb detail and engrossing strategy is a feast for the imagination. Oh look, we've got screenshots. Probably not what we expect. Special features over 200 rooms. Multiple robot merge facility. Weapon silos. Power pods. Teleport console. Consoles. Multiple firepower and armor caches. Pocket full of words. More word processors. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll skip past the word processors. A sign writing utility. 6128 and PCW only. Hey, it costs the same as that spreadsheet. 30 pounds. Works with virtually any dot matrix printer. Produces decent posters with little effort. Bad news. No font editor. Can't create your own character styles. Works under CPM Plus only. Toot. Oh no. Toot's about to be arrested and thrown in jail. For graffiti. Hot tips. Poster printing. This program sends text to the printer, enlarging the text and printing it vertically down the page. Ideal for creating banners on posters. There's one restriction, you may not enter more than 90 char 80 characters. Oh. Cheaper than, than the sign writing program we just saw. And Toots apparently angry at some arrow for some reason. Who knows what's happening? Cursor positioning. Okay, folks, here's a remedy for all the people trying to write the ultimate program in one line. When you edit a line, try this. Control up or control left. Send cursor to the start of line. Control down or control right. Send cursor to the end of line. Big Al, Soho, West Midlands. Handy. Fractions. Hackers only. Oh no. The man who won lost. The man who lost won. General MacArthur and Admiral Yamamoto. Oh. Now you can change the course of history. The Battle of Guadalcanal has been called the most decisive single action of the war in the Pacific. More significant even than Pearl Harbor. The battle lasted six months. It took the combat skills, the courage, and eventually the lives of thousands of dedicated fighting men, both American and Japanese, to bring it to a conclusion. The battle for Guadalcanal is unquestionably the finest war strategy game to date. It's perhaps the first game to give you a true indication of the awesome responsibility of a battle commander. Now you can refight the battle for Guadalcanal. You can rethink the tactics you can redeploy the resources. You can relive the battle. In effect, you can change the course of history. Okay. Oh. 
the second page, the game display is best described as two halves. All general information about the games in the top half, all control of units and info on them are in the lower half. To the top right, you will see a clock face. This runs at a speed of one minute for every 10 seconds of real time. The clock never stops. Never. Activision Entertainment Software. Cheat mode. We're getting the cheats done first. Tenth frame. Paul Evans leads is a tip for getting a strike every time on you on the US Gold bowling game. Play the novice level. When the bowler appears, tap him one space to the left. Do the same for the aiming cross. Being careful in both cases, it is that it is only one tap. It's particularly easy to move the cross too far, so keep an eye out. The hook won't affect the ball on novice level, and whatever the strength of all the pins should fall. Grand Prix Rally 2, Jay Hall of Leicester, has some advice on surviving this old game. Just drive as fast as possible on the right of the road, and you'll miss the other cars. You can't do this on the water circuits. Slow down for right turns to avoid drifting out, but go full tilt on the left, left bends. Oh. Ninja. Getting to the end of the Master Triant game isn't easy, so here are some tips from, from Jay Seldon of Headley. First pick up the three tools and go through all the screens on the first level picking up all the idols. Go up and continue until you reach Akuma's chamber, where the last of the seven idols is. Now you have to return to Tori on the sea. And be careful every time you re-enter the level because the enemy will have come alive again. The best move is the punch because it's the quickest. When using weapons, throw them and leave the room left to right, then re-enter. Your opponent will have lost strength, and the weapons will be ready for you to pick up and use again. Idols replenish strength, so try to find them when your energy is low. We won't mention the, the fact that the, uh, the enemy you're fighting on the right side of the screen cannot hit you, unless they have one of the throwing weapons. So it makes the game a little easier. Match point. Our Pratt of Ramsgate has some tips that will slow down the devastating speed of the Scion game. Hold down the keys Z, X and C and as soon as the ball is served the match will take place in slow motion. It's actually possible to beat the computer. Also, if you wave the racket around while your opponent is trying to serve, it may put them off. Cobra. Tips for the ocean film bore come from Jamie Mascal of Bar Hill. They are men with bazookas, knives and guns. Duck under bazooka shots and jump over knives and guns. Then kill the gangsters. Don't kill women standing still or the man under a lamppost. You'll lose points. Gangsters will pop out of dustbins. Duck their shot and kill them. If ducks come down and you're on the ground, you must duck them. If you're on a platform, you should jump at the duck and kill it. Ingrid will be somewhere on level 5 or 6 and will follow you around impervious to bullets. Got a paperboy poke and it hasn't even been reviewed yet. <laughs> Toots Corner. Fly Spy. If you had trouble with the Fly Spy tip last month, it's because we missed something out. Pause the game, type, this is too hard, and finally press a key between 1 and 7 to get out the cheats. How'd you forget that? More, more pokes. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, the home computer version of the Atari coin-op masterpiece. US Gold. All American software. Pick up your trilby and trusty bullwhip and don the mantle of the legendary Indiana Jones. Prepare yourself for your, for the, your most dangerous adventure yet to storm the evil Temple of Doom and rescue the imprisoned children and the magical stones of Sankara. Beware the foes and hazards that block you away. The thuggy guards will fight to the finish and, and poisonous cobra snakes will rise up in front of you. You will traverse perilous ledges Ride underground railways, 
and cross the bottomless fiery pit in pursuit of your quest. You will call on all your reserves of courage, strength and skill. Push yourself to the limit. Ride your luck and the magical stones may just be yours. Commodore 64 Cassette 999 Disc 1499 Amstrad Cassette 999 Disc 1499 Spectrum 48K Cassette 899 Atari ST Disc 1999 Screenshots from Arcade Version 5 million up We're giving away 5,000 games One of them could be yours You see a free game of your choice, apparently. Well, the Pilgrim. But text adventures that we're not going to look at. Rick Hansen, Special Agent. Robico, 995 cassette. Robico isn't exactly at the front, forefront of the Amstrad adventure market. In fact, the Pilgrim can't remember seeing anything from, for the CPC from this Welsh outfit until now. Rick Hansen is the first part of a text-only trilogy, which, which a year or so ago, according to Robico, wowed BBC owners across the nation. Will it give us Arnold owners similar treatment? Well, scores are Atmosphere 48%, Interaction 62%, Challenge 60%, AR Rating 52%. Two from the shelf, the Cal Crusader is always keen to receive copies of games written by readers. GAC and the Quill have introduced many to the gentle art of adventure writing, and with the promise of poor professional adventure writer from Gilsoft on the horizon, the trend is bound to continue. This month, Pilgy pulls a couple of recent submissions out of the bag and meditates upon the art of home brewing. Malevolence, Quilled by the Page family, London. Oh, well. <laughs> That's that's an image. No ratings for these though. And Brainless JC by Paul Thomas Hucknell Knotts. Direction must fight the night. Just write it in, into the into the image. It's fine. I'm sure, it won't take me any more space than the, just using the text. All right, what now? <laughs> Okay, again, game rushes you along. Night Orc, level nine, Rainbird, fourteen ninety five cassette, nineteen ninety five disc. Is this a preview. Yeah, this is a preview. Stay tuned for the Pilgrim's definitive review of the genuine Arnold version coming soon. Programming in programming section, but not. Tips, so uh, whatever. By Tony Crowther and Ross Goodley, now from the TV series Centurions. Power, extreme, extra frame on and ready. Set millions of baddies. Choose from an awesome array of weapons and prepare for the battle of a lifetime. Ace McLeod, Jake Rockwell, and Max Ray. Now the Centurions stop the evil Doc Terror in his desperate bid to destroy the world. Guide the Centurions through space, sea, and air. And find all six parts of the Master Key before it's too late. Oh. Special features, multi-directional scrolling. Five mass three massive levels. Amazing exoframe feature. One or two players, cooperational game. C64 128 cassette 999 C64 128 disc 1299 Amstrad cassette 999 Amstrad disc 1499 Spectrum 899 There you go the reviews finally There's a slightly different look to the start of Action Test this month with dispense with the full list of games and from now on we will indicate just the raves and master game on the lineup this month's master game is Exelon, a true, really stunning game that will make your eyes pop out when you see its colourful graphics and wild explosions. The raves are packed with action of all sorts. F-15 Strike Eagle is a very advanced combat simulator. Zynapse and Star Fox will take a more futuristic stance, whisking you off into space. Star Fox in particular will amaze you with filled-in 3D graphics and lots of space zapping.
tapping. There's also the new James Bond game, which didn't get a rave, but is bound to cause lots of interest. Probably for the competition? No? Anyway, we start off with Trio, which is a compilation. But we'll look at each of the games because they weren't released separately beforehand. So Trio, Hit Pack, 995 cassette, 1495 disc, joystick or keys. Another compilation where they use one good game to dump off a couple of slack games. Not quite, but close. The first of the trio is Airwolf 2. The game intro tries to make Stringfellow Hawk seem like an avenging angel. So to decipher, you control his new helicopter. Shoot everything in sight. Along the way, you'll find extra bits of weaponry to help you. A good game with detailed but single colour scenery. Movement, movement is at a sensible speed. As with all three of these games, the music is catchy. This game, however, has more music than the others, and it's all great. Sound effects are also enjoyable. By far the best of the three games. Const Look at this. They swap these paragraphs around here. 3DC, a strange name for a strange game. You are a submariner who must wander around the seabed in search of parts to construct a submarine. Why did it go from here to here? It's weird. I did that in the last issue too. Control is rotational. You pick up as many as six objects at a time. You also get the opportunity to control an eel. Useful for getting into small spaces. Those who have felt much patience will have, have the option to send away for a solution. Graphics are dull and lifeless in colour. Though the bubbles and animation are good, music and cor is corny. It recites, I do like to be beside the seaside. I suppose I could play it once or twice since it's on the same the same side of the disc as Airwolf 2. Great Gurianos is the last of the trio. You control Gurianos on his most difficult mission yet. Like he's had one before. He must fend off natural missiles fired at him by flying nasties. By hitting certain objects with your sword, you can increase the energy of your sword, shield and armour. Every now and again, he will have to fight an awesome warrior. Use shield to fend off his blows and sword to stab him. Graphics are big and very colourful. Sound effects during the game are bad. The only music is during loading. There's screenshot is of Airwolf 2. But we tell by the helicopter, I guess. Second opinion. I enjoyed all three of these games, which certainly represent good value for money. Airwolf 2 and Gurianos are the more immediately rewarding, with plenty of action, but all of them will prove testing in the long run. It's nice to see a compilation of games that haven't been released before. Let's hope there's more to come. Green screen view. All three are okay. The verdict. Graphics 59%. Large and colourful in Great Gurianos. Dull in 3DC. Sonics. 82%. Fantastic range of good music. Grab Factor 73%. Airwolf 2 is the easiest to play. The other two are more like space fillers. Grab Factor 73%. Airwolf 2 is the easiest to play. Yeah, The other two are more like space fillers. And I, I do have Great Gurianos somewhere. That got the, that was a, got that as a budget re release. Staying power, 71%. Lots to get into with all three games. Airwolf 2 and 3DC are mappable. Airwolf 2 is mappable, isn't it? It's typically a, just a smup, really. AA rating, 71%. Three very different games for the price of one. Alright, now we get to actually play games. Finally. Took nearly an hour to get there, but yeah, we get to play something. We will, we will start with Airwolf 2. Uh, yeah. Okay. 
confused. Okay. Yeah, Wolf 2. Alright, hit back 987. Yeah, it sounds like Moon Patrol. Yes, Hazebaker! Playing a game better than Airwolf! More than just Moon Patrol music, at least. Uh, it's, it's a little different, at least. Spectrum looking. Oh, they're coming from behind already. Went through a wall. That's, that's unfair. Oh no, walls. Okay, now we're in the bongo zone. Can't shoot those turrets for reasons. It's a speed up. I think we're going fast enough though. Close to the wall, I think. I don't know. All of a sudden, music. Yeah, I can increase the volume a bit.
Shoot time. Oh, toaster. Sh doubling your shots. That's handy. We can't shoot these. Go past, go, go past these and just hope they don't fire. Middle zone back to sound effects. Volcanoes. What does this do? That's the laser. Oh. Oh, what? Game over. Okay. Of it. I hope it doesn't fire. this to the base. Thank you. 
uh, two shots. this music all the time. Easy past this, but at least, at least it runs out. Last minute or something. Dead end. This is not going to be safe at all. Oh no, okay. Oh, another one shows up from behind her. Huh? I don't for that one down there. That's, that seems like suicide. I'm not sure what hit me there. <laughs> um. Okay. Next game. Thankfully we're on the same disc. Or same side of the disc. By a good friend, David Perry, he who gave us Savage. Outside Europe and Australia prohibited. Oh no! As I said, I got this, uh, this on the budget re release at one point. Oh no, it might be illegal!
wait for it to load. <sighs> oh, good title screen. Joystick. We still have extra keys to enter. Sort up, middle, down. Yeah, WE6 sounds good to me. Pause game return. Um, start. Here we go. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I can do this if I remember. Oh. You do it quick, though. Pretty sure you can... Pretty sure you can do the shield of... Kind of... Don't seem to have much time to do it. Ow. My head. a lot more random to me than it probably should be. Uh, no, this is an arcade port. Port of Gladiator, which had this, did have the title in some regions. I guess the UK was one of them. I mean, we've already played Highlanders. So <laughs> Started, not really enough time to do much of anything. Thank <laughs> you. 
<sighs> Travel with great Gridianos as he battles his way past the most feared and toughest warriors ever found. Fight strong and live long. Copyright Hit Pack 1987 Licensed from Taito Corporation Export outside Europe and Australia is prohibited. Great Gurianos by David Perry of Resolutions We'll see more from David Perry in the future. <laughs> okay. Got one more game on this compilation to look at. Switch sides. Now we play some 3DC. controls. The separate controls for yourself and the eel and a window activator. This is going to be fun to set up. Let's see now. now. I think advance is supposed to be down and jump is supposed to be up. And the eel it says yeah, up to jump, down to advance. How confusing. So, so A will be left. Joystick option there, but only joystick one. Don't choose joystick two. So that maps to other keys. Uh, that'll be doable, I guess. There's space in this damn thing. Here it is. Space for that. Space to play. Okay. That's. I got an octopus on me. I don't know what this does. So. Yeah, up and down is up and down there. It's, it's got that creek at least. Down to move forward is stupid. And doing down and forward would be impossible on a joystick. You can't do, can't move forward and jump at the same time. So opposite, kind of opposite here. Okay. 
down. Down to move forward. It's stupid. You can redefine it the other way, but then the cursor will have that inverted because it's stupid. Now what do we do? Who knows? I don't know where the, where the eel comes in, in this. Oh. Get the first screen again. Where's it in? Uh, there's no eel here. I don't know where the eel is. It's makes it even more confusing. I've played this game before, so I don't really remember a damn thing about it. points from somewhere I'm dead. Three D C stranded on the sea bed. You must find or construct the parts of the submarine which will take you to safety. Beware the dangers of the deep, but remember the old saying, an eel is a friend for life. I never heard that before. Only the most quick witted and agile of mariners will avoid the grisly fate of Davy Jones's locker. Programming by Fat Man and Dobbin. Designed FND and Emma Strudwick. Operate Elite Systems 987. Wait for change. That looks like a thin tank controls, of course. over him, huh? Well, try one 
Donkey Kong. I can stand on top of it, I wonder. Ah, get away from me, octopus. Points. Does it can keep the points? Oh, what? What the hell happened here? I don't know nothing. Can you just go? Just, just demonstrates what you're supposed to do in case you do nothing. an item. around. I've got 19 points now, I have no idea why. Pick up anything. The other question is, how do I get out of here? There's nothing we should have probably thought of beforehand. sort of needs a bit more exploration. Do. I will check the instructions. Make sure. Make sure we're not missing something here.
Scenario and introduction. Strand on the seabed, you have to find and construct parts of a submarine, which will take you to seven. Let me see that. Oh! This is not shown on, on, on the screen at any time. Get drop the numbers one to six. U to use and W for status. Pause is clicked and use radio. Okay. 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 Here we go. Looks like a toaster. We're not going to get any stairs though, because I've defined W to be jump. No! No! Oh, oh that's the radio! Music! Radio. Oh, I just did. Jump too much. Ah, we will move on. Okay. Next game. It's Wonder Boy. Another arcade port. Activision 999 cassette, 1499 disc, joystick or keys. I've been playing this game in the arcade near me for quite a while. I'm still no good at it, but there was something about it that kept me playing. Until it is, I saw someone score over 250,000 on it. I don't know why, but I felt quite inadequate after that. Anyway, this version I looked forward to, though I didn't know it and did in no way expect it to live up to the arcade standards. You play Wonder Boy in his long and arduous mission to rescue his girlfriend Tina. Tina has been kidnapped by the evil king in a land far, far away. To get to him, you must traverse seven territories. Each territory consists of four lands, and each land consists of four areas. Confused? Me too. Anyway, you will understand if you play the game end of each territory you will come face to face with an ogre. Defeat him at all costs, mainly because you cannot get onto the next territory without doing so. On your way you can pick up fruits by jumping on into them. There are also eggs, which contain a useful item, an axe, a skateboard, which you can ride, or a guardian angel. Be careful to jump over obstacles and to throw your ever-replenishing axe at the killer frogs, bees and snails. If they hit you, you die. The first thing I have to say is that in almost every true to life aspect, this version is similar to the arcade one. The music is the same, or rather attempts to be the same. The graphics are dull in comparison, not only to the arcade version, but also to other games for Arnie. 
However, this game is not too bad. It's, it's slow animation is annoying, but I got used to it. I enjoyed it. I wish it were mine to keep, mainly because it saves me 20p a go. Second opinion. This one's got quite a lot going for it. A cute character, scrolling action, varied weapons, and lots of adversaries. It does give the impression of being a less than perfect conversion, but I found it addictive. The multiple starting points throughout the levels are useful. I don't think this will disappoint many people. It's fun! Green screen view, nice and clear. Verdict. Graphics 58%. Dull colours and slow movement. Great loading screen. Sonics 51%. Good music. Grab factor 65%. Slow movement takes a while to get used to. Interesting quest to complete. Staying power 72%. Seven territories of four lands of four areas. Life gets harder as you progress. AI rating 68%. Not quite what it could have been. the music. Copyright Sega 987, all rights reserved, Activist Link, authorized user. Push! One or two! One or two players. Okay, let's go. Area one, round one. Hold the button to run faster. Unfortunately, the fire button also fires the axe. It can be awkward. All right. Fails the platform. Okay, invincibility for a period. Oh no, that's the door. Okay, got the doll. Oh, 
Oh no! Ended. That snail's gonna be in the way. Moves, but slowly. Oh no, we ran off the ridge. Maybe we can run over the snail. Jump over the snail. Completely. Yeah, okay. That works. Nope. I get in between them somehow. Can't get hard already. Especially we don't have a weapon anymore. Be loose. <laughs> it's really be loose. Oh, an invincibility. No, oh, no we are getting points for things. Oh, the platform's already. up out of nowhere. Oh, wait, I'm waiting. Bad one, huh? Run.
get 100 for everything you kill with the invincibility, huh? Oh, jeez, he's tall! I'm just shuffling along! That's a weird... Oh, ooh, he threw something. One. These little dudes are tiny. Jumps! Jumps high! I think it's all off. up there. Well, yeah, that would have been my boy. Two. But that didn't work. I thought I'd land on it, but no. Run two. Here two, run two. Okay, jump. Over. Yeah, I have no idea what the ME6 version is like. I suppose if, it, if it, it's also by Activision, it's a Spectrum port. Oh, it'd be completely different, probably, if it's not. Alright, we'll move on to the next game.
game is Fifth Quadrant by Bubble Bus. 895 cassette, 1295 disc, joystick or keys. Fifth Quadrant is based on an old and tired theme. It mixes aliens with the standard night law qualities. This is, plays nothing like night law. In other words, you have a choice of four robots, each one in a different location. You start as Slog, the captain and pilot of the ship. Slog is annoyed that his old computer brain is slower than the other robots. You can swap roles among Slog, Plot, the ship's navigator, Nut, the engineer, and Bod. What a name, I often wish that I'd been christened Bod. Bod is a bit of a coward and, to be blunt, pretty thick. The lofty of the spaceship. Your mission is to use each of the four robots to rid the ship of the invading Zyman. You do this by freeing each robot and logging it into the bridge computer. What's bridge got to do with it? This is no time for games. The Zyman appear in most room and can be zapped by the robots if they're carrying a weapon. You can access various pieces of instrumentation, replenishing energy, for example, or activating a computer display. This is where you'll need to decipher the alien language. Not an easy task. Graphics are detailed, but lifeless and uninspiring. Sound is reminiscent of the old Vespers. Don't expect to be stunned by anything, and you'll find plenty to keep you interested. The biggest annoyance is the speed of the robots. They're a bit too hard to control at times. First aid target score. Free slog. Singer opinion. I found this boring at first, just charging around trying to find something interesting and trying to get those wretched Zyman off my back. However, as you discover things like the wall consoles and energy replenishing points, it gets better. You'll certainly have to map it to get anywhere, and there will be plenty of tasks to keep you going. Green screen view. No problems here. The verdict. Graphic 62%. Intricate robot designs. Drab colours. Sonics 48%. A few zappy effects. With a title music. Grab Factor 57%. Slog is less confined than the rest and thus lets you see some of the ship. Not easy to get into. Staying power 65%. Difficult mission to complete. Tasks and multiple characters keep things interesting. A rating 60%. I'd have preferred it in the budget range. Yeah, this is another game I got as a budget re release. It does take a bit to get into. So let's uh, get started here. Fifth quadrant, fifth quadrant, loading. It always to display it twice, but whatever. Game and music by Paul Midcalf, Esquire. Copyright 987, Bubble Bus Software.
Let's go. Yeah, you see, you move around pretty damn fast here. That's a lift. Aha! That gets my energy back. At least a bit. I get so much out of them. I'll find some, uh, Codes. You see them in the you see them in the monitors that are mostly displaying static. Ooh, terminal. This really doesn't help anything here. Do we have any codes at all? Line up the door! Come on! It's hard to do. Here we go. Jeez, my life's almost gone. Yeah. Oh, I'm out of, oh, out of shots! Change characters. Thing. Try the other one. Just to see if it does something. May do nothing. Who knows? Just Oh, 
Oh, he's out of shots too. Well, oh, he's dead. Never mind. Um, let's see if I need anything up here. Can't get out of here because that door's locked. And he's got no energy to start with. So I think it's, it's screwed. We're basically soft locked. So fail. We just quit. The zone has taken complete control of Orion. Your crew have been have been jettisoned into deep space. You've gained yourself an entry in the captain's log. Please enter, you, please enter your initials. Thirteen percent. Thirteen percent. Well, one more try. Do start in random areas, in some cases, or we'll random part of the same area. one down. Just remember writing down codes was important. code here. I need to die. It's two more. There's nothing these can be as also locations. And see every room has a there's a three character code as well. Ah, 
See if any of these do anything. Who knows? for a lift. Hmm. I've got an idea. Go to the where the lift is. Uh. Oh, I'm going to die here. do that. Shots. Okay, this is where the. If you write down where this, this room code. Getting back. Out of the way. Oh, I don't. I don't. Uh, mm. uh, much more life out of this. one that was on its own. That one. It doesn't really tell you if you're getting it right or wrong or not. I'm sure it does. So we're just entering all these codes that we've done, we've found. See what see if we can find something that works. This one in the I forget. Oh, in the wrong.
Switch. It's one of these things. Let's try these codes again, see if any of them do anything. Where did it, is this two codes? Hmm. In that case, maybe. this first. I forgot to note down which colour each one was. Cause, uh. anything. That's all life again. No more.
Oh, no, he's dead. Oh, I don't think we got anywhere. I used to know how to play this game a bit. So, uh, forgotten everything, if you like. Again, yeah, yeah, that's probably what you get. You don't really get very far, just explore wherever you can. Start with, it's a game that'll take time to figure everything out. Uh, let's move on. Imagine, 895 cassette, 1495 disc, joystick or keys. No sooner does one game appear in which you pick up objects to enhance the power of your ship than a whole shower of them do. Especially a logical extension from adventure games where you pick up objects to expand your abilities, which was then adopted in arcade adventures and now shoot 'em ups I found it got boring rather fast, but at least it provides variety in what might otherwise be ordinary games. This is of the vertically scrolling breed of shoot 'em ups, and is another of those oh so popular coin up conversions. The concept is simple enough just fly about the screen as it scrolls beneath you and wipe out any aliens foolish enough to wander into your sights. The background is colourful and varied, scrolling smoothly but slowly downwards. The slowness would be more would be more annoying if you weren't actually busy concentrating on staying alive rather than hurrying forward. As you blast the aliens, you'll notice some of them have leave gold stars lying around where they're destroyed. Pick one of them up and it cycles one step through a menu of additional powers. Choose, choose to have one of these and, and it will return to the start of the menu. The eight facilities are extra speed, return to normal shooting, shoot sideways, increase size and firing rate of ship, bombs in front of the ship, laser beam, homing missiles and shield. Of these, the most useful are the homing missiles, which last indefinitely and home in on their targets. Once you've got these, you can use them in conjunction with the shield and extra speed to create alien mega death. It's a playable game with slick graphics and plenty of variety. The weapon choosing is an original, but in the, in the long run, I think the game's just a little easy. Still a good game that won't disappoint action fans. First day target score, 20,000. Second opinion, a tired subject, pick up objects to increase firepower, blast away. It may not win points for originality, but it's very playable and addictive. Green screen view, looks good in green. The verdict, graphics 77%, colourful varied backgrounds, smooth slow scrolling. Sonic 71%, good title tune and effects. Grab factor 78%, lots of blasting right from the start. Nice variety of additional weapons. Staying power 76%. Lots of tough aliens and variety. Scrolling is a little too slow to keep the pace of action going. AA rating 76%. These games are still fun, but the theme is wearing thin.
software, by probe software. Alright, let's, let's get started. Ran right into that as it ran out, huh? Oh, well. Now the game gets hard. You got no power ups. Yeah, it isn't time for a boss. Side shot, look at that puny, puny little wide shot, side shot. Tiny explosion for the big ship. Thank you. 
is that doing? Kill me before I, before that shield ran out. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is the way that I went, this all becomes a bit useless. Yeah, that's slap fight. <laughs> ah, let's uh, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. Get the idea. If you want to play slap fight, you can always play the homebrew Alcon 2020. It's better. A lot better than this is. Skimmer. The Edge 895 cassette, 1495 disc, joystickle keys. This game arrives with quite a reputation for its graphics on another computer. As if we're not going to judge a game by comparing it to other machines, but it certainly retained much of the graphic quality. You're flying a skimmer on the outside of a larger starship. The defences have been activated and can't be switched off. To survive, you've got to make your way through three defensive zones and find the entrance back to the starship. On each zone you have to locate and destroy an object that will cause a barrier to disappear, allowing you to pass on to the next zone. The object is the same in all three zones, so once you've found the first one, you'll know what to look for in the next two. Many of the locations have portals which produce various types of defensive craft. These fly aimlessly about loosing off a constant hail of fire, which will which will, will damage your shields. The shields also run out with the passage of time, so you have a time limit. You have three shields with which to complete the game. The rest of the scenery doesn't do much except look pretty and get in your way. Your craft occasionally needs to flip upside down to pass under an obstacle, a more vulnerable position because you can't shoot. You also have to take detours inside the ship using hatchways leading to internal corridors. The graphics are very colourful, and but where the game falls down is on the action. The defences provide no sort of challenge. Just shoot wildly. Three objects aren't difficult to find. You'll crack the game quickly. 
It looks impressive to start with, but it's a, it's a game you'll solve quickly and never come back to. First day target school, complete the game. Yeah, yeah, finish it in a day. Second opinion, the graphics are very pretty and sound effects up to scratch. Unfortunately, there is little in the way of gameplay. It will hold your interest for a while, but tends to be slow moving. Green screen view, fine. Oh no, Toot's got a shadow. She's running from it. Oh no. The verdict. Graphics, 83%. Detailed and colourful sprites and background. Nice explosions. Sonic, 68%. Good title music. Grab factor, 72%. Interesting to explore. Defences provide little challenge. Staying power, 52%. The object to shoot isn't always easy to find. The game isn't large or complicated enough. AA rating, 58%. Don't be deceived by good looks. Okay. There'll be games with better graphics than this. A lot better than 83%. Let's start. And this is the game. Where you gotta find some object to destroy. Not obvious what you're looking for either. So you can't sit still and fire either. It's, uh, that does not work. Thank you. 
Oh, jeez. down I know what it is we're supposed to be destroying Game over. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Shadow Skimmer. I don't know what, what the object is you're supposed to destroy, but I guess it's there somewhere. Try again. I think it's this thing that you start next to, is it? Another death. How do you pass that, huh?
So yeah, it's cherry skimmer. I don't know what you're supposed to do other than cheat things. She isn't immediately obvious. Apparently once you know it's easy or something. From 3D, Freescape is solid. Can hardly wait. Who's this font? What now? What poke? What's new? Available from 19th August at your local independent computer shop. H and D's just tell you what it is. Yes, Chancellor. Ever thought you could run things better than the government? Yes, Chancellor is a complex model of the economy and of the E. Oh, I'm sorry, of, and of the ebb and flow of democratic politics, unemployment, strikes, opinion polls, financial crises, inflation, taxes, the simulation follows general economic laws, and all the outcomes are logically tied to your decisions. Can you stay in power long enough to win three elections and a life peerage? PC1512, PCW8256, 8512, CPC6646128, £17.50, including disc. Manual, VAT, and postage and packaging. Topologica. I only got a, I only got a post office box at this point. Okay, this will be the final game of the night, I think. There's already nearly eleven. So this is the master game, Exelon, by Hewson. Eight ninety five cassette, fourteen ninety five disc, joystick or keys. Kaboom! In case you missed that. Raphael Kecho is may not be a familiar name to you, but if, but if I tell you he wrote Equinox from Microgen, you'll know he's building quite a reputation for great games. His latest is released by Houston and should be an enormous success. The hallmark of Equinox was a combination of brilliant graphics and fascinating gameplay. This is repeated here, but in a completely different type of game. It's an unadulterated bomb, bullet, and blast em game across 125 screens of action. It's split into five zones of 25 screens each. You have to make your way from left to right across the screens, and once off the edge of the one screen, there's no going back. The character you control has two weapons and two firing modes to destroy deadly alien forces. The weapons are a missile launcher on your back and a blaster. The missiles are arc out in front of you to destroy larger obstacles in your path, and the blaster shoots straight in front of you to kill the smaller alien forces. The first alien you come across is a large piece of artillery that fires off single shots at you. You have to duck underneath its bullets and loose off a missile that will shatter the gun into a myriad of flying pieces. The explosions really are something else, chunks of alien equipment flying all over the screen. The gun is followed by a few more large but harmless obstacles, and the fun really starts. Aliens will start flying on from the right of the screen in movement patterns that wobble up and down, circle around, or accelerate towards you. The blaster can zap them, but their constant height changes will often force you to leap up and down to get them, and they will keep coming at you until you near the right-hand edge of the screen. The way the aliens stop when you get near the edge of the screen is a measure of the thought that's gone into the gameplay. It means you don't get surprise deaths from things appearing just as you are about to move off screen. A particularly malevolent alien is the birth pod, a large sphere full of wriggling objects. When you missile it, it releases a horde of red spheres, which will have to be quickly zapped with the blaster before they disperse. Missile launchers are tricky because they launch shells straight at you, which have to be shot by the blaster. They come in two levels, so you have to duck and stand up very rapidly as you advance on it. This is another instance where the shells stop coming at you as you get close in order to give you a fair chance. One of the nastiest dangers is the guided missile module 
They see the missile after you as soon as you appear on screen. You can sometimes avoid the missile, but the best solution is to destroy the guidance module with your own missile as fast as possible. There are many other dangers, including landmines, combined guns and launchers, and hammers that appear from the floor. That little lot gives you plenty of trouble, not helped by your limited supplies of both bullets and missiles. The layout of the screen can also be awkward, forcing you to jump over things or shoot between two possible levels to proceed forward. You get between platform levels by means of teleporters, which can also come in handy for getting you out of trouble. The news is not all bad, there are plenty of replenishment units for the blaster and missiles to keep, you bla keep your blasting ability going. Each of the five sections also has a module where you can be put in an exoskeleton. This gives you a double blaster and makes you invulnerable to things like landmines and hammers. However, if you use it, you don't get a bravery bonus at the end of the section. The graphics can't be praised highly enough. As well as the explosions, there's good animation, marvellously designed objects and screens and excellent use of colour. The gameplay is compulsive. It needs constant concentration to survive. You'll not only marvel about how this game looks, but you'll be totally hooked by the action. First day target score, 40,000. Exxon. In this case, you didn't know what it was called. Second opinion, just eyeing the graphics tells you you're in for a winner. Superb. Loads of breathtaking scenery. The best explosions around. Fancy sound effects and it's highly playable. My kind of game. Plus anything and everything. Green screen view. Shoot, shoot, shoot it up. Because it's all visible. The verdict. Graphics. 96%. The meanest explosions you've ever seen. Sorry, the meatiest explosions you've ever seen. Superb use of colour and animation. Sonic 72%. An okay title tune and effects. Grand Factor 95%. Addictive and challenging gameplay. Good variety of opponents and obstacles. Staying power 92%. 125 screens to get through. Not much thought or strategy required. A rating 93%. Worth buying just for the graphics. Just for the graphics. Okay. Exelon. Oh no, we're not cheating. You want pokes? No. Thank you. 
it's going out. And I haven't defined the keys. We got to find the keys. Let's kill him! Kill me! Kill me! Kill, me. kill all the lives. Make a quick button. Uh, find keys. Oh no! Great. I think it's one life. Hey, the game gives you nine lives for a reason, I'm sure. Look at those things that just pop up at random. through that. Is that oh. oh, geez. 
one of those things? Well. Here you're done. Brevy bonus zero. <laughs> bonus screen, first first stop pointer. Five thousand points. One extra life. platforming Jump? What did I jump for? Oh. No. Oh. God damn it. Hate these patterns. I just sort of want to do neutral jumps. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Raphael, Suryani, Scraggy, Sabata, Paddy, Lofty, Jimbo, Leo, Cat, Orange, Puppy, Onion, Rip, Figaro, Ink, Pen. Okay. Mm. We'll do one more attempt. See if we can get further. Try not to run out of ammo this time in the first areas. Oh, 
Well, that's a good start. There's no quit in this damn thing. Escape is pause. Oh no! No, I just want to die now. Die, come on. Try again. Oh no! Oof. Oh no, that's too low. Well, wasn't it? Greedy. Yes, I'm just greedy now. <laughs> I'm just staying up here. Oh, that was. Ah. <sighs> right, ten stages in. I lost half my lives. Thank <laughs> you. 
was close. I was stupid. What did I jump for? What didn't he do? One life left. Jeez. He's not going to get any further. Zero points. Pass these things. Oh, got too close to it. Thank you. 
Well, look at that. 